This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. I am not amused. Interrupting my judgment only to be silent. Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. I have to answer. I won't let this end here. My reasoning is not over yet. So, how did she use the breaker without leaving the detention center? It's perfectly possible with this method. What made it possible to turn off the breaker? Her position at the warden, she had an accomplice, the timing of the incident. Um... Crap. The warden position doesn't really make any sense, because... <laughs> I'm Buster Baxter. Because she can't <laughs> fix it from her side, I would assume. She had an accomplice, could be possible. Timing of the incident... Was it, like, that morning, was it stupid, like, the high voltage thing was not on? Feel like we have any, no record of that. I was about to say, I feel like if anything, it would be extra on because there's prisoners out there. So I would say she had an accomplice. It was indeed impossible for one person. But what if there were two? Exactly. Just what I expected from you, Miles. Yes, you had an accomplice on the prison side. Enough. I am disappointed in you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. What's that, pal? You make it fun of Mr. Edgeworth? The inmates at this prison all wear bracelets. If they try and go where they please, they'll set off the alarm. Ah! So you've noticed. This is a prison, after all. Not only the prisoners, but the guards, too, are under constant scrutiny. So why didn't anyone notice Elbird? The only ones allowed to move around freely are the animals. And they certainly could not have used the breaker. But it's still possible that a person did it. Excluding the inmates and guards, just what kind of person would you say it was? We can't exclude the inmates and guards just yet. There was only one person, one whose movement was not restricted. This evidence shows that there was someone in the prison who could move around freely. Was it the... the Remember, his the, bracelet the, was broken. The, oh, whoa! Oh yeah, and she's the one who was like, I really like Mr. Sod. He's yeah. such an upstanding citizen. <laughs> yep. Gosh darn it. So he kind of did help. Yeah. That's fine, though. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm honestly okay with it. I was just so expecting, like, Dogen to be like, we were playing chess. And <laughs> then I killed, killed him. him. <laughs> <laughs> that's more what I was expecting. And so that's why... And that's that, what the, it makes you expect. And so that's why when that didn't happen, I'm like, bet you it's the warden. <laughs> That is, it looks like a bracelet worn by the prisoners. This belongs to a certain model inmate, and it's broken. What? Well, just who on earth does this belong to? I spat on myself. Frank saw it. Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> Look at the Dupper screen! He looks awful! He looks awful on the lower screen, He looks too. like he got- he looks like he has hives. <laughs> He, he also, I was sick that day! <laughs> no, but it's like, whatever about like his actual- Yeah, if you look down there on the bottom screen, it looks better. Upper screen, it looks like he got allergies and then got like chicken <laughs> box at the same time. <laughs> Smile for the pain. He also looks like the happy mask salesman. He does, yeah. I've never noticed that. Someone pointed out that Ambassador Polano also looked like the happy mask salesman. No, this guy looks like it more. Yeah. Frank saw it. The warden's favorite inmate. Oh, look at that expression! Someone's nervous. <laughs> I love how the fox licking. is licking her sweat. Don't you think it's strange? He managed to keep this hidden while he moved around freely in his daily prison life. I wonder if it was like... <laughs> there was like romance happening or something. Oh. <laughs> she was like, oh, I love this prisoner, he's so yeah. wonderful. Golly, <laughs> when you think about it, it shouldn't be possible. I'd hazard a guess that this was because he was a special case. Just like Serhan Dogen in the special cell. The prosecutor's statement is merely conjecture. The baseless <laughs> conjecture. Just look at that face! <laughs> you could find out by simply asking Sot himself. It is my firm belief that Mr. Sot and Warden Roland were partners in crime. Due to their collaboration, another route surfaces. 
the real route by which Knightley's body was moved to the prison. How many secret routes are there? <laughs> There's like four of them now. There were two obstacles that needed to be dealt with. The security camera in front of Knightley's cell and the electric fence in the courtyard. Both these problems could have been solved with a single stroke. By having saw it, switch off the breakers in the breaker room. Mr. Edgeworth, could you wait one moment? Do you still intend to deny it, Warden Roland? Uh, I give in. I confess. Warden Roland! No, this cannot be! Yes, it's just as he says. Frank Saw and I were partners in crime. No way! You did it, Mr. Edgeworth! Well done, Miles. At last we have the real culprit cornered. No. Like Mr. Edgeworth said, Frankie operated the breaker. But we were not responsible for Knightley's murder. W what? Warden Roland, whatever do you mean? Judge Courtney would- I don't know why this is turning- Judge Courtney! <laughs> Judge Courtney! The Southern- Southern Roland. I like that voice action! <laughs> Judge Courtney, I'm the Warden as, as Roland. She, as, as Roland gets more and more, like, agitated. agitated, she becomes more and more Southern. <laughs> I have heard, like, not- not in a bad Judge way, because I think Southern accents are cool. I have heard people, sometimes from the South, try and, like, ditch their accent, and then when they get either really upset or drunk or something, it, like, comes <laughs> yep. out, and they're like, Ugh. Yep. George Courtney, would the goddess of law hear my confession? The goddess of law is merciful. She will absolve you. I was being threatened. That's why I had no choice but to do as I was told. So who was threatening you? Sir Han Dogen, the assassin. Dogen? It's been going on since that man came to the prison. I will never forget that day. When we were both alone, he suddenly said to me, Wow, this is, like, intense. I have many dogs outside the prison. D dogs Loyal dogs who obey my every command. I soon realized what Dogen referred to were not really dogs, but his human henchmen. And that's not all, he said. You'd better watch how you treat me. If you don't want you and your family to become dog food. Does she have family? Let's be real. <laughs> Look at all those rings. She's been married a few times. You can wear rings and not be married. <laughs> Impossible. They don't sell you rings unless you're getting married now. I'm kidding. What? Artie, what about purity rings? Those don't exist. Those absolutely <laughs> exist. I knew so many girls in high school who were like, This is my purity ring that, I'll have, that I'll have till I'm married. I bet you they weren't virgins. <laughs> Artie! What the heck? Maybe I'll cut that. No, I won't. No, no you I won't. won't. You will not cut that. <laughs> I had no choice. I gave him the special cell. I gave him anything he desired. Uh... Anything he desired? You don't mean the supplier. That's right. Anything he ordered, I would deliver to him. An underground dealership. I was the one who was one. I was the one who won over Frankie. It was simple. I just offered him special privileges within the prison. And these underground dealings. Once a week, in the middle of the night, Frankie would shut off two of the breakers, so I could move from my office to the courtyard without being seen by the security camera. I would go past the fence and drop the goods down the well into the, near the prison. This makes sense. Cause so I was like, how the heck would this dude just get whatever the heck he wants? Right. And then I'd sprinkle this perfume over it. So that's the true identity of the sweet scent. So she dropped... <laughs> so what probably happened was Sir Handogan was like, get me ten tons of gold. And then she <laughs> dropped... Ten tons of... <laughs> and then she dropped me toilet it. paper. <laughs> right, and then she drops it down the well with the powder... The, no, the perfume. The perfume. The perfume, and then that just hits the dude in the head, and that also causes him to bleed a bit. The scent of a perfume was a signal for Dogen's dog. After picking up the scent, it would carry the goods to Dogen. <laughs> it's so hard to do this voice! <laughs> of course, this had to be done while Elbert was done away with his cell. 
A done away? No, just away. <laughs> I'm surprised you never found out about it, pal. We have a strict timetable here at the prison. Meal time, exercise time. It's easy to know when he's away from his cell. And since little Rocky's afraid of Dogen's dog, I didn't have to worry about him making noise. Who isn't afraid of Dogen's dog? Anubis I, is terrified. I'm afraid of normal dogs who just want to jump on me and love me. <laughs> Dogen's so, dog is trained to kill people. <laughs> Dogen's dog's like, when I hear the so sound of the bell, ding, ding. <laughs> just my <like> jaws! <laughs> So, having full knowledge of the prison's inner workings, she made the deliveries herself. This would have ensured there was no slip-ups. Frankie would have done... Uh, I keep saying done instead would of Would have turn. done turn the breakers. Done turn the breakers back on in the early morning. And the delivery was complete. I then modified the timestamp on the security camera. You have told us a great deal. The goddess of law accepts your pen 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 penitent. What? Penitent. What does that mean? I do not know. I actually don't know. You are penitent. Just penitent your confession. confession. As the warden of the prison, how could I have done such a foolish thing? That day Knightley was killed was also a delivery day. Seems Frankie was working the breakers as usual. But the day I had nothing to send, so I did not go to the courtyard at all. The secret of the supply system. So then Warden Roland was... The police have been searching for Dogen's henchmen for ages. I've also been helping them, but... I've been interrogating him personally in my office, but... No matter how much evidence we have on him, we can't get a single word out of him. So the reason you kept on interrogating him... Yes, it was to find his henchmen. I borrowed all the evidence from the police and carried out the investigation myself! Whoa! Oh, she's losing it. <laughs> oh. I might need a different voice for her then, if she's like. You can give her a different voice when she's agitated. That's fine. <laughs> I kept an eye on all of his actions and examined all of his mail. Mail, like his correspondence, chest letters. But I could never uncover the true identity of his henchmen. This fear—it's something you could never understand. Prosecutor Edgeworth, you were listening, right? I'd say this confession clears the warden of all suspicion. Is it really necessary to press her further than this? Is it necessary to press her further? Yes. Always. Judge Courtney, my questioning isn't over yet. I'm sure the goddess <laughs> of law isn't satisfied yet this either. This is Phoenix Wright where it's like, you want to press on someone? Are you Satan himself? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> You mean to badger this woman further? Even if she was threatened by Dogen, this does not prove she was not the culprit in this case. She was able to use the supply route to transport Knightley's body. Do you have any evidence to support this? The body gave off a sweet scent. The scent of perfume that was used to signify a delivery. Can you explain this fact? Oh, of course. Since I've made so many deliveries, the scent would have lingered around the well. When the body was moved through the well, the scent would have transferred to it. Mr. Elbert also testified to this fact. That's it. For some reason, that well gave off a nice scent. A nice scent? I don't know what it was, but it smelled sweet like candy. The lingering scent in the well would, of course, be picked up by anything passing through. Nah. The defense rests, I see. In that case, court is adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything we can do? Is that all you say, Kay? She's just like, is Kay's there not very useful as a partner. Kay always says that at the end of every single investigation. Yep. She's but like, is the there anything we can do? Literally, Kay... This is why I don't like Kay as a partner. The only thing she actually does to help you is little, little Thief. Beef. And that's like, that's it, it is Some helping of it us, is, not we're her. used to, okay, we've had three partners. We've had Maya, who literally is amazing. I, I guess technically we've had Pearl. Pearl also, Pearl but they're both, also, they can both channel people. They and, can channel people. And they're both actually like, at least helpful or at least funny. Trucy is kind of like the better version of Kay, maybe. Yeah, because she at least helps, saves your butt a whole lot. Trucy saves your butt a lot with like Mr. Hat. And, also, and she's just, she's smart. She is smart. She does use She's Phoenix Wright's daughters. Though. 
<laughs> yeah. That's the only thing where I'm like, Kay could be better. But the fact but that But she's it's not like, talking about underwear. No, but here's the thing with Kay. Or purity Kay... reigns. <laughs> oh my gosh. is just the character, though, where it's like, I'm a thief that doesn't steal. Like, it's so random. Ta -da! It's like... It, she is like a Final Fantasy character. Yeah. Where it's like, my village is burning. I am a thief, but I do not steal. <laughs> Please, save me, Cloud. I'm like, uh, what? Okay. Is this Yuffie? <laughs> I'm the great Yuffie. What should I do? Is this as far as I can go? Is it over already? You are freaking out. Yes, Sebastian, it is. And now court has officially adjourned. Objection. Who? Who was that? The one guy that did the splash? <laughs> it's not nice of you to adjourn things just like that, Courtney Pie. Mr. Shields. Are you objecting to the court adjourning? <laughs> of course not. I ain't got no objection or anything like that. Go ahead and adjourn, court. Do whatever you like. Hey, what are you doing, Mr. Shields? Whoa there. Calm down, okay? Who wants some chocolate? That looks like the grossest chocolate ever. <laughs> that looks like taffy. That like was in your pants like, for two months and then you've been sitting on it and you're like, here's some taffy. <laughs> That's because it's taffy and it's been sitting in my pants for two months. <laughs> and I sat on it. <laughs> That's like what taffy is. It exists as like the, here you go, chump. Here's the taffy I've been sitting on for two months. <laughs> Still better than pixie sticks and smarties. I think I'd take a pixie stick over taffy. Pixie stick is bottom tier candy. Pixie right stick. down there with almond choice and mounds. Circus peanuts. Baby roofs. Baby roofs. Baby roofs. Baby, baby roof. <laughs> Pay, payday is bottom of the bottom of the bottom. <laughs> payday is just peanuts covered in glue. Yep. <laughs> That's um, what it is. Also, I don't like almond joys. I don't really like those. Um, I, I know this is not really bottom tier, but it's closer to the bottom. Whoppers. Those, yeah, whoppers. And like those weird little like bell candies where it's like it's Rolos! Here's not not Rolos. I'm talking like you think it's Rolos and then you're like, oh it's just chocolate. And it's Oh the pretty, advent oh, candies? A little bit, yeah. Oh, They're like fine. Those. They're just not like crazy. <laughs> Is this a joke? Is you're this talking a about joke? candy? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I just have one tiny request to make. As Simon Key's attorney. That's right, you're the defense attorney in charge of this case, are you? <laughs> I barely talked. I just let Miles do it all. <laughs> exactly. Did y'all forget? That's so mean. But you just left everything to Mr. Edgeworth and didn't do anything at all. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's why I thought I'd do my job a bit. Do your job? That hardly sounds like you at all. It's to prepare for the trial. I'd like to ask the warden a few questions. Surely you jest. What more would you expect to hear from her? Well, Miss Warden, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the culprit. My thoughts? Uncle Ray believes that Simon is not the culprit. It seems that Miss Warden also suspects someone other than Simon. I'd like to hear you out. Mr. Edgeworth, what's Mr. Shields up to? He's trying to lure Warden Roland into testifying. Why was the supply route used to transport the body? I'd say it was to pin the crime on Dogen. Ah, I see! If he committed a murder here, he would be transferred to another prison. One with tighter security. And that would get rid of the troublemaker. Exactly. She wouldn't pass up a chance like that. Hey, hold on a sec! A culprit besides Simon! What do you mean? Simon was the one I was supposed to prosecute! Exactly. So wouldn't it be better if DeBest also listened to what she has to say? Amazing, Mr. Shields. You managed to drag Mr. DeBest into this too! He's easy to drag into stuff. Warden Roland, is this acceptable? Oh, you, it's fine, it's fine. You understand a woman's heart. Uh, th thank you, uh, mademoiselle. Actually, I've thought this over. I'd like to tell you my thoughts. Since you hugged me at the beginning, you let me kiss you. And I think that's fine enough. You'll let me speak, won't you, Justine, darling? Of course. You may speak. Mr. Shield's awesome! Whew. That was a close shave. 
Thank you, Mr. Shields. No, no. I'm still leaving the rest to you. <laughs> Remember what I said? A defense attorney never gives up. The fate of our client rests on our shoulders, after all. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. It'd be uncool if Uncle Ray didn't put that into practice. That's true. Now then, Miles, it's your turn to show that you'll never give up. Right. Well then, will you listen to my story? Yes, I will. <laughs> That's a guard. My story. I believe that the culprit in this case could only have been Dogen. I have no idea what transpired between Dogen and the victim. It simply could have been that Dogen was displeased with him. In any case, he was the one who stabbed the victim to death. He probably had a dog dispose of the body. This is the truth of the case. The victim. Mr. Knightley, was it? I think it's a truly terrible thing. Taking a man's life, you mean? That's how you go about saying it, isn't it? If only I had been more vigilant, his death- Vigilant. Vigilant, his death would not have happened. That's why I want to clear up his regrets. Warden Roland, how considerate. I'm sure Mr. Knightley in heaven is overflowing with gratitude. He didn't go to heaven. Okay then, Ari. I, mean, I don't think he was a Christian. I don't think so either, since he was like, bro, I could totally just, like, kill off Ethan. Ethan Rook. Ethan Rook. I want my plan about assassinating the president. But not really. But not really to work. I didn't see a Bible in his prison cell. Um, you don't necessarily get a Bible in prison, dude. No, I feel like Bibles are pretty standard issue in prisons, actually. I, well, I don't know. It could also trigger people, depending. So they may not, like, have it in the prison, but maybe if it's like, Ooh, you want to bring the Bible with you to prison? That's probably fine. It has a knife in the Bible. <laughs> 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 and it was, it was tied to the verse, And them that take the sword shall perish by the sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is gratitude really what Knightley feels? And by the way, heaven and hell, that's the Christian concept. Or at least the names heaven and hell come from Christianity, so. Yeah. That's why I say Christian, not, like, Jewish or whatever. Is gratitude really what Knightley feels? My story. The rebuttal. I believe the culprit in this case... Could, could only have been Frank's side. You seem very confident in that. No, the culprit is Fred here! Hey, Jones, I'm not even in the country. That's funny. You seem very confident of that. How can you be so sure? The children of this home are all good little boys and girls. There's no girls. Yeah, they're the only girl, lady. I, she's the only and, girl. And some of the guards. It's like Tina Fey. There's no girls. There's no girls in the Russian prison. Yep. <laughs> Working in the coal mine. Only men on that stage. Yep. <laughs> believe in yourself. Believe in your friends. And believe in me and the guards. Is this a Tinkerbell movie? <laughs> Follow your heart with the Tinkerbell necklace. There's no way any of these hardworking children could have committed a murder. Frank saw it already, uh, did that. Meh, quite an emotional reason. Makes sense, coming from someone like her. Only Dogen would have been capable of something like that. I have no idea what transpired between Dogen. I think she's, like, panicking at that point, which is like, Ugh. I think it's more like the sinister, like, I, It's not, thing. it's supposed to be her, like, cowering in her hat. Oh, oh, okay. Knightley was being held in the detention center, and Dogen was in the prison. They couldn't make any contact. Don't you think that would have prevented trouble? The prison is quite confined, right? There were many ways for them to meet. Knightley was murdered days before he would have been sentenced to prison. Surely there weren't many ways a meeting could have occurred. Even without a direct meeting, Dogen can still cause trouble. Mark my words. It simply could have been that Dogen was just leaving him. I don't like that guy. Kill him. <laughs> Power! <laughs> what I don't know why we made him the Emperor, but it's fine. I, I, the Emperor voice is not what I wanted to give him, but I can't do the voice that I wanted to give him. That's okay. What could Knightley have done in the detention center to displease him? That was just an example. You don't have to take it so seriously. Didn't I already say that I have no idea what transpired between them? Nevertheless, you certainly are a serious one, Edgeworth, dear. What? Well What's this? That piercing gaze. Always standing straight and stiff. Very nice. Looking very clever, my dear. I think I'm about to become your biggest fan. Nope. Impossible, old Impossible bag. Impossible, old bag. <laughs> <laughs> nah. 
Mr. Edgeworth, stay focused. It's just a flesh wound. R right. Is this some form of psychological warfare? Yes. Shall we pardon the sin? She was. He was the one who stabbed a victim to death. I'd like to hear your thoughts about the circumstances surrounding the murder. Well, I suppose it was a simple job. During his booking, I learned that the victim had some kind of injury to his neck. He couldn't turn his head to the right. I remember him saying something like that. Booking. That's the process one undergoes before being locked up in the detention center. It sounds like you don't really know a lot about Knightley. I only know a little. In any case, he would have been an easy target for Dogen. Perhaps he used the chisel hidden in this chessboard. How did he know- how did she know that? We didn't tell her about that, right? No, we did not. Unless if when we brought it up, was she in the room between Dogen and us or whatever? No, she came in later. No, she, yeah, she yeah, came Yeah, she in came in later with, like, two mm -hmm. guards. They were like... Well, Simon was the one who told us he hid the chisel on there. The victim wouldn't have even had a chance to scream. I see. Your opinion will be a very valuable reference. Could you add those last statements to your testimony? Oh, you are making me blush. You're so cute. Ooh, ooh. C-A-C-U-T-E, I can't I think, spell. I'm pretty sure in Japanese when they do that, it's like... It's spelling the hiragana. It's like they're just supposed to say it slowly, right? Or like say each syllable at a time? I, I don't really know. Yeah, so if you were gonna be like, I love you, really slow in Japanese where it's like, I love you, it would be like, daitsuki. Uh, mm. uh, and that's why. Daitsuki. Kind of like that. And the, okay, so that's kind of the only one. Kawaii. That would be what it would <laughs> Kawaii. be. Kawaii. That means cute. I know. I am aware of that word. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm just kidding. I'll continue. You want to know something funny, Artie? What? So, kawaii means cute, but kawaii means scary. Kawaii and kawaii? So, kawaii is C-O-W-A-I. That oh. means scary. Kawaii, which it's is like K-A-W-A-I-I. -I -I. Yeah. yeah, but it's so similar, Kawaii. isn't it? Kawaii. It's, it's Hawaii, but with a K. Yeah. The That's chessboard. Kawaii, the thing that the victim brought with him. It seemed like he really enjoyed playing chess. How could I have guessed that the chisel would be hidden inside it? The chisel and the chessboard. That fact is only known by a select few people. This was the answer we arrived at from our reasoning, after all. So then, why does she know about this? In Dogen's hands, even a chisel's enough to be used as a lethal weapon. I'm, I'm sure and, of that. Uh... Simple job. You certainly seem to hold strong feelings towards Dogen. Th that's just natural. Remember my interrogations. That man, no matter how much evidence we find, we still as slippery as a snake! You've got a lot of guts. That smug look he had on his face when he returns to his cell! Ah, just thinking about it makes my stomach churn! I can sort of understand how you feel. That was fun. Yeah. You know I had a dog dispose of the body, this is the truth. <laughs> he has many. <laughs> he actually has five black this dogs. This is my dog, Ruben. <laughs> Ruben? <laughs> What's his actual dog's name? Anubis. <laughs> this is my dog Anubis. This is my dog Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Do I like Ruben. <laughs> Ruben. Dog. Ruben. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is why we take a while. <laughs> Do you mean to say the dog Ruben threw the body into the well? Dogen had more than <laughs> one dog. <laughs> no, I just was the joking. Black one. Oh, a different black dog. Didn't I tell you he had a dog named Reuben? <laughs> <laughs> he has henchmen outside these walls as well. You mean his henchmen outside of the prison aided him in his crime? Of course not. They would have been caught by the security gates. But think about it. Wasn't he the supplier? It's not hard to think he had dogs within the prison, too. Oh? Well then, why don't you tell me the names of those so-called dogs? If I knew that, I wouldn't have gone through so much trouble. In any case, it's still a possibility. Please try to consider it. She's dodging the question. Can't I pursue this line of thought any further? 
Warden Roland's testimony's covered in lies. If I pick them apart one by one, her true colors will surely be revealed. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba 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 That's the definitely the one. Yeah. How'd you know? Tell me more, tell me more. more. Does, Does she have a car? car? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Warden Roland, you certainly are sharp-witted. Hey, enough with the titles. Call me Patty. P-A-T-T-Y. Uh, however, there's something you are a little too knowledgeable about. <laughs> oh, embarrassed. You're such an inexperienced child, Edgeworth, dear. Edgeworth, Edgeworth <laughs> could have had any girl, but he was <sighs> like, nah. Yeah. Fight on, Mr. Edgeworth. Thanks for nothing, Kay. You said you, you said you didn't really know much info about Knightley. If that's the case, how did you know about the chisel inside the chessboard? Uh, uh, of course, the, the entrance check. Enough of the poor excuses. The entrance check. The chessboard wasn't something Knightley brought with him. It was brought to him later by Mr. Keys. He didn't even have it when he arrived here. Th th that's. My, my mistake. I, I meant the parcel check. Even if we assume that, there are still many suspicious points. Why wasn't such a chisel immediately confiscated? Ah! Judge Courtney, did you tell anyone about the trick to this chessboard? I did not. If no information about our investigation was leaked, then how did you find out? Remember that one guard who was like, oh, <laughs> 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 one. <laughs> He really likes Warden Roland. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> around her. I'm not even going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> you could not have examined this during the entrance check or the parcel check. Certainly. Someone in the warden's position would never have a chisel, would never have let a chisel slip by. Exactly. So answer this, Warden Roland. When and how did you learn about the chessboard secret? Hm. In that case, I shall answer for you. It is because... I give up, Edgeworth, dear. It is as you say. Hmm. I interrogated Knightley. That's how I learned about the chessboard. But... Please believe me, I didn't kill anyone. Enough. It would appear that we have uncovered some vital information. I'll ask you to testify once more, if that's alright with you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. No objections here. Thank you, Edgeworth, dear. I'll do my best. Well then, Warden Roland, I trust there will be no lies from here on out. Are you kidding? I have a ten more testimony. No, I'm kidding. I would not be surprised. Her pool of lies is slowly running dry. Soon I will bring out her true nature. I, true I think this is the final testimony. My story part two. Are, Are you quite finished? That, that girl who sings that kind of drives me nuts. She's so mean. This is gonna be free episodes. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to call it an interrogation. I always make sure to talk to all the new arrivals. Mr. Knightley, yes, we had a little chat. After our talk, he went right back to his cell, I assure you. Um, just question, is your voice, if your voice is killing you, we can take a water break? <laughs> sure.